So we are on to round two for our Halloween releases for 2019. And today we're gonna to put together our Moon Man clock. And I've got everything here in front of me. It's a pretty straightforward piece. And let's just dive right in. We're gonna begin with the side pieces, or I'll call them the walls from here on out. And I'm gonna put those together. Now this piece, of course, since it's a clock, it does feature a, uh, you know, a clock mechanism. So if you guys have put together any of our clocks from the past, it's going to be very similar as far as assembling the mechanism and such. And of course, the actual, you know, the actual design itself is different. And for those of you that put together our bewitched paper sculpture, the one with the tiny little fairy lights. We're also actually featuring those lights in this project as well. So you're gonna, hopefully you bought more than one. I know that when I ordered mine, they came in a set with a bunch of different colors. This time around, um, I ordered just the soft white ones as far as the color temperature goes. So um, anyway, as you can see here, you're gonna to want to, and I typically do this before I do anything else, I just kind of pre-fold everything, and I've been using this little scraper tool recently just to get nicer folds. Uh, before I get started here, I do wanna show you, and you wanna check your supply list uh, for details on where to get these little lights. And you can see how nicely they glow. Little fairy lights with a compact little battery case that you can put right inside of the project when you're done. And then of course, uh, we've got a clock mechanism, just like the ones that we've used in the past. A little battery goes in there. And I chose this one because it had really cool designs on the brass colored um, hands for the clock. Now, technically, um, you'll notice that if you go to the store, the little shafts here are gonna be, um, they're gonna vary in size, and that's okay. Um, take a look at our supply list so that you can see the length of this one. I think it's 5 eighths of an inch, something like that. Anyway, if yours is shorter or longer, it's okay because what you can do, and we've included a little template, uh, you can either A, cut out a series of these and stack them together to thicken it up so that when you put it inside, it creates more space between the surface of this and where the actual hands go. Uh, or you can use this as a template to cut out a, a little bit of foam core. And if you want to use a really thin piece of foam core instead of layers of paper to create a little additional space. Uh, but we'll get into that more as we get towards the end of the project. For now, let's just begin with the assembly. Now these three pieces here, um, these are all going to get glued together to form one long piece. Okay, so you can see the, you have tabs here. So I'm just gonna jump right in here and we're gonna get our glue on our tabs. And this is black paper, so try to be kind of careful with your placement of the glue because the glue, when it kind of, when it dries, if you get it in a spot where it shouldn't be, it may leave a little bit of a white sheen, not a white sheen, but a clean sheen, clear sheen, I should say. And this is a Halloween project, so it's not, wouldn't be that unsightly, but I'm gonna try to avoid it if you can. Okay, so I'm just taking and folding it at the seam where I just glued everything together and I'm pressing down there. Make sure that it's all lined up. When you fold it on top of itself, you notice that the tabs match up perfectly. That's a good indicator that you've got everything correctly lined up. Okay, and we'll get our glue on this tab here. And I'm gonna work that glue out to the very edge as well. Just clean up any of that excess. Okay and just pop that right down. Just match it up as accurately as you can. There we go. Again, folding it over onto itself, just to check my alignment. 
Everything looks good. Okay, now you can have a decision to make here. This piece is gonna have um, some panels on it, and I typically like to work flat when possible. Now, we can actually go ahead and close this up just to make it all one continuous piece. So let's do that first, and then we can kind of decide if we want to put our panels on now or later. I'm probably leaning more towards now because it will be more accurate. Okay, so we should be able to just close it right up. Should match up nicely and fall right into place. This thing is completely flat now. And that looks pretty good. All the other tabs match up nicely. Give that a few seconds to set. Okay. And there we go. Okay, so our clock is gonna kind of be shaped like this. Okay. So we do have a series of panels, as I mentioned. And well, there's a total of five. And one of them is like that. So we're gonna put one here or one here, one here, one here, one here. We're gonna skip the bottom, and then we're gonna put one on top. Okay, so we have a total of five panels, and let's just decide which one is gonna be the top. This is gonna be my top, and as you probably have figured out here, based on the size of these panels, um, these are going to leave a little bit of a border all the way around. So let's just get those in place. I'm just gonna do that now. It'll just be a lot easier, and we'll just be more accurate this way. Okay, so let's get our panels in place. Just like that. Okay, and again, this is my top. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to one of the sides here. There's my first side. Now, if you have patterned paper, with a pattern that has a specific orientation. And make sure that when you cut these pieces out, you apply them correctly so that you can see the pattern in its correct orientation. Okay, so there's our next piece. Try to keep them nice and flush here so that they're lined up. If it's a smidge off, no one's gonna be able to tell. Not a big deal. Okay, so throw it on my next panel here. And technically, you know what I did that I don't usually do is I didn't start by making the base. I always usually make the bases first, but hey, you know what? Maybe we can just, maybe we can just transition to that here in just a moment. Okay, so remember, it's our top, one of the sides, one of the sides. Here's our bottom, we're gonna leave that blank. And we're gonna put, we're gonna put the next panel here. And the glue is flowing nicely today. And there we go. If you get a little bit squirts out, just rub it off real quick before it sets. Should be okay. And let me double check my work here. That's my top, side, 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 and here's my last side. <clears throat> Let's get that on. And then, yeah, we'll just put the clock together first. Why not? Let's just jump right in. Actually, you know what? No, I take that back. We're gonna we're gonna put a base together first, just so that this part's easy. Just to get our feet wet and get a feel for the glue bottle. Just kind of there we go. Okay, so there's our main structure. I'm gonna put this off to the side while we construct the base that this thing sits on. Okay, so you're gonna wanna get these pieces here, and this is our main base. So go ahead and get everything nice and folded. Now you don't have to do what I'm doing here with my little makeshift bone folder. It's actually like a vinyl tool, like a vinyl scraper, or you know, the little tool that you 
used to press down the vinyl. Whatever works. Or you can just do it by hand with your finger. I sometimes don't like the texture of the paper too much and I rub on it too much. So I just like to use this thing. Okay, so I'm gonna put this guy together and we're gonna start by taking the tabs that are connected to the large piece here and we're gonna glue those to the neighboring sides first. Okay, so just throw a little bit of glue on that tab, give it a dab and we can fold this out to get it out of the way a little bit and then bring this side in and just make sure that you line it up nice and accurately and just press and hold that for just a moment and allow, allow it to set. There we go. Just be patient and then head on over here to the other tab on the opposite side. Give that a little dab and connect it to the tab. Okay, just tuck it right back there, get it nice and lined up, and just squeeze. I'm pushing, I'm pushing this part down too, just to, just because it's easier to just squeeze that piece there, bringing this part down. Okay, so that seems to be sitting nicely. So that just leaves two more tabs here. Let's get this one in place. Just a little bit of glue on that tab, give it a dab and tuck it behind and press. There we go. And the last one here, if you can get your nozzle in there, you're all good. If not, you can try painting it with a little scrap piece of paper. My veterans know what I'm referring to, but it shouldn't be a problem. It's got enough flex on it. Okay, there we go. So we've got all the walls connected. Now we just need to close her up like that. So what I wanna do is get our glue on the three tabs here. Throw a little extra glue towards the end there right along the edge. We're gonna paint that out all the way to the edge so that it closes up nice and tight. Like that. And I'm just gonna paint that out to the edge. Okay. <clears throat> So go ahead and close this up. You may want to flare these out just a tad. Bring this down. Do your best to and focus on aligning it with the side opposite of the side that's hinged first. Just make sure that, that you get that nice and aligned. The rest of it should just kind of fall into place. And then once you got that there, just take your fingers and run them along the edges here. Make sure it's making good contact. And give that a moment to set. Now we are going to embellish this with this guy here. This is a, a fabric piece that we're going to put on here. Um, since it's not something that we're including, um, not going to, not going to show that, but you're welcome to take some ribbon or something and just kind of glue it to the bottom. Uh, it's like a lacy sort of braided Piece. It's going to kind of make it look a little more gothic. That's optional though. You don't have to do that, obviously. Okay, so this is the part that we closed up, but I'm actually going to flip this over because this piece was already connected. And although, even though I did a good job here, I still know that this is going to be more perfect. So I am just going to leave that as is. And now with this clock, we, uh, we actually designed it so that you can also hang it on a wall if you'd like. So th this piece here, you don't want to center this piece. You want it flush against one, one side, one of the longer sides, and then the rest of it will have a little bit of an even, well, an even border around three sides, but one side's gonna be flush. Okay, so I'll show you that here in a second. Let me go ahead and get my glue on this gold foil piece. So again, flush on one of the long sides, and then, there'll be an even border 
that will be created automatically on the remaining side. So I'm going flush on the side that's away from me while I'm kind of looking left and right making sure that I've got an even border on the left and right and that looks pretty good and then we'll just press that down and give it a moment to set. Okay, so you can see what that looks like. So up there it's flush, down here we have a border. Okay, so again, this one you can actually hang if you want, but you also have a base so that you can use it as a little tabletop clock as well. Now if you've got any part of this that's kind of peeling up, um, you can grab a scrap piece of paper and just kind of paint a little bit of glue under it. Let me show you what I mean. Let me grab a scrap out of the trash here. So here's a scrap piece of paper. I'm just going to throw a little bit of glue right on one corner of it. And since there's no glue on the bottom, I can slide it right underneath while using the surface of the base without getting glue all over the place. And I'm going to press that little piece down where it wasn't making solid contact. Okay, so there's our, there's our base. This is the base base. Okay, and then we also have a little platform um, that, that goes on top of the clock. And it's pretty much exactly like the piece that we just assembled. Okay, so let's put that together, this piece here. We'll start with this little tab here. Again, working on the side that has the long little lid, we'll call it, connected to it. And just connect that to the, well, bring that to the back of this piece here. You can see this is the long piece. The tab is going on the inside. And just be patient, press and hold. I might have put a little bit too much glue on that. And that's why it's taking a little bit longer to hold, but that's fine. Okay, we'll bring this tab in and give that a little bit of glue. That's good enough. Fold that over and give that a press. Now you can see that I, I kind of started to ink this a little bit and I'm going to show you a little bit of my inking technique on this. Nothing special, pretty straightforward. All right, moving right along here to the next small little tab here. Go very easy on the glue. Don't overdo it, otherwise you'll be sitting there for half a day waiting for it to dry. So go very easy on it. Okay and just press and hold that together till it sets. And then we'll go over to the last one here. We got one more little tab here. Throw a little bit of glue on there and tuck that behind this shorter piece. Give it a press and hold. And there we go. Okay, just like we did with this piece here. And we're gonna throw some glue on these remaining tabs. Make sure you get a little extra out to the edge. We're gonna spread that all the way out there just to make sure it closes up nicely. And just spread that out. Get it all the way out to the very corners here as well. There we go. Bam. And just like we did, fold this over and align it with the side opposite of the hinge side. Make sure that that is nice and aligned. The rest of it should just kind of fall into place. Now, you may need to just kind of nudge things in a little bit if it's sticking out, and then press down, give it good contact. Same with the other side, and just press and hold that down. Okay, so we're gonna hit this with a little bit of ink uh, just, to, just to give it a little bit more of a spooky feel since it is a Halloween project. Now, um, you're going to want to take a look at, um, well, if you downloaded our official app, uh, just search for Dreaming Tree on the uh, App Store or on the Google Play Store. Uh, once you have it downloaded, at the bottom there's a, um, I think it's called Tools or Supplies. Uh, you'll see a link to these little pads that I use as well as the inks. Now, in this case, I'm actually not using my typical inks. These are Hampton Art. Um, I'm not sure why I did that, but <clears throat> anyway, so I kind of use this instead of using a straight pad. Now, technically, because this is a Halloween project, you probably could just go straight off the pad, but again, with this, um, it does apply it uh, much more, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a deeper application where with this pad, it's you have a little more control, and also because 
you know, because it's cotton like that, it's kind of kind of gives it a feathery sort of application. That's actually, yeah, like in for those of you that use Photoshop, it's kind of like a feather. Okay, it kind of creates a little bit of a gradient as well. So I'm just going to hit the very edges with this. And as I'm doing that, it's also kind of scraping the surface a bit. So it's leaving a little bit of that color right on the surface as well, which is nice. I kind of like how that's coming out in the contrast to the purple on the, what color is this? This would be, uh, I think that is nickel, AC cardstock nickel. And you'll notice that we have that listed in our supply list as well. Okay, so I'm just hitting the edges. Take a look at that. Maybe the sides could use a little bit more. Again, when you think Halloween, you can kind of go all out with the inking on that because, well, just because it's Halloween and Halloween's a little bit of a, a grungy sort of holiday. But again, it's personal preference. So you do as much or as little or no inking if you prefer. It's up to you. Okay, so there's that. And again, I'm just kind of hitting this, just dabbing my little ink pad and then just real quick little strokes. If you, the slower you go, the more you're gonna put on and I feel like I'd rather, you know, go over the surface multiple times with quicker strokes until I get the application that I want instead of just doing one tough line where I'm putting way too much on. And, you know, once it's on there, you can't really take it off. You kind of have to start over. So I kind of like using this little technique. Now, this is a little bit different because I'm actually targeting the very edges, which I don't typically do, especially when we're doing flowers or things of that nature. But nevertheless, I really like these ink pads. They put on just enough ink, not too much. I mean, you could, with a, with a brand new ink pad, you could really cake it on there should you want to. But again, this kind of gives me the flexibility that I like when I'm applying ink to my pieces. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I think that's going to work. And most of that actually is going to be hidden by the, uh, the little piece of fabric embellishment that we're going to put on there. Okay, all right, so these two structures are done. Hope yours came out better than mine, although I did a pretty good job, so I'm happy. And that kind of uh, gave us a little bit of practice uh, for the next part here, which is actually putting together the, uh, the actual clock itself. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to begin by, <clears throat> we're going to begin by putting one part of the face on, okay, just to kind of um, solidify the structure. And then we're going to work on putting our lights in. So hopefully you have some scotch tape, you're going to need some scotch tape to get that done. Um, and here's what we're going to do now. Now you'll notice that you have two of these pieces. Okay. And one of them has a little L cut into it. Let me see if I can, there it is. You can see that little L there. Okay. That is our liner piece. Okay. And we're going to actually shove that through the back and then glue it to the inside. But before we do that, we're going to put our vellum on this. Okay. And I'm going to put our vellum on this side, no, actually, you know what? We're gonna put it on this side here. We're gonna put it behind like that, okay? Because the tabs are actually gonna get glued to the front of it. So um, that piece of vellum goes there, and then this piece of vellum is gonna go over the actual area where our numbers are. So let's do that first. And let me take a look and just think about this for a second, okay? Yep. All right. So let's start by, I'm just going to do a very thin line of glue around the perimeter. Okay. Go very thin here. You don't want that glue squirting out onto the actual vellum. Okay. And then we do need to go in here a little bit. So just throw some around the little ring. You can see how it's kind of creating like almost little perforations, which is pretty cool. Okay. 
So let's throw that on there. Now again, this is the, the back side of this piece. Now lay that down as accurately as you can. It's kind of a big piece, so do your best. Just make sure that you have it over the specific cutouts here for the orange piece, just to make sure that when the light shines through, it's actually gonna shine through the orange. I'll show you what I mean here. Okay, so there you go. These are the areas that we want to make sure that we have covered. Okay, so that worked out nicely. And now we're going to do the little ring. Okay, and you want to make sure that you have that overlapping the orange just ever so slightly. You don't want it going over here because then um, you're going to be overlapping the little cutout of the orange area. Okay, so um, take a look one more time to see where you want to place your glue. Okay, so let's see here. This glue can actually, okay, I got it here, I think. Let me, let me triple check that one more time. Yeah, so right here where the actual design kind of terminates, you can do a little bit of a, just a circle in this area here. Okay, and then what I would do is I would hit each of these bats with just a dot Okay, and then maybe just tiny little dots on the main numbers, the three, the six, the 12, real small little dots there, and then do a little bit right around pretty much where the, uh, the orange part terminates. Try to get it like right in the center where the orange meets the black, and then just pop that right on there Try to get it nice and centered, and there we go. Let's take a look at that. There we go. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> now this is a moment where we do need to kind of pay attention. All right, so again, this is our bottom, and this is our top, and of course, at the top of a clock is where the clock is gonna strike 12. Let's flare these tabs out. Okay, and we want to, this is the top, this is our 12, so we're going to slide that right in there. Okay, and it should kind of help you, should kind of form the clock now. Okay, and out here, it should be exactly flush with the very edge. Okay, so you see how that's lining up nicely, just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by putting glue on the tab up at the 12. Just make sure that your 12, your 12 o'clock is lined up with the top of your clock. I'm gonna fold this tab down. I'm gonna put this down on my surface and I'm gonna press that down so that it holds. Okay, so I'm just kinda of helping the glue get in there. And there we go. Okay, so that first tab is in. I'm gonna go opposite side here. I'm going to go down to the six and I'm going to get some glue on there. I don't need to really work that glue out to the edges. That's not important right now. This is more just structural. Fold that tab down, put that on your surface and just make sure it's nice and lined up and press down, help that glue get in there nicely. There we go. So our 12 and our six are now glued down and pick a side. Let's go over to the top section, top half of the three. Okay, and let's throw some glue on there. And we're just kind of alternating so that uh, we don't create too much tension on one side. We're just kind of trying to, okay, so I got the glue on that tab. I'm gonna put, push it down, put it down on my surface and press from the inside. Get that to stick nicely. There we go. Now I'm going opposite of the side that we just did. Just like that. And we'll get our glue on this tab here. Go very easy with the glue. Push that tab down. Place it down on your surface and press down from the inside. There we go. And that just leaves these two tabs here. And our, our, our main structure is pretty much done. This is the rest of this is going to be fun. Well, this is fun too, but all right, so push that tab down 
and push from the inside. It should be butted up right up against the very edge of the wall here, just by default because of the way this was engineered. So you shouldn't have to move anything around. All right, and the last tab here, fold it over, put it down on your surface, and press that down so those two, two sections can join together nicely. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we have a nice solid structure. Now ultimately, what we're gonna do, here's my 12 o'clock. We've got one more piece that's gonna go over this, and this is where our little moon man is gonna go. I have him here. We're gonna glue this to the center, okay? Um, but we're gonna do that after we get everything else in place because just in case we get some glue all over the place, I don't want to, I don't want to blemish this thing at all. So we're gonna leave this alone for now. Let's flare these tabs out just to get them out of our way. <clears throat> and now we're gonna get our scotch tape out and our lights. So here are the lights that we got. We got these off of Amazon. I just have to figure out how they wrap them. There we go. So you wanna get them unwrapped and just kind of straighten it out. And then I'm gonna show you how to uh, apply this into the inside of your clock. And just to make sure that everything is done nice and even. And who knows how the heck they, they did this. But anyway, go ahead and unravel this, straighten it out, and then we'll, uh, we'll get the lights inside there. All right, so I've got my, got my light strand here all flattened out, straightened out. Now, uh, with this one here, if you got the same model that we did uh, as far as the lights go, what we want to do is you want to... You wanna put three of these, it's gonna be kinda of hard for me to show you this, uh, but you want three lights for every section. So three here, three here, three here, and so on and so forth. That's kinda of the idea. And uh, if you do that, you should end up with two extra lights left over. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and just use tape to kind of tape this down and we've got a nice nice hole back here so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to i'm going to get just one of these in here real quick i'll do a a quick section just so i can show you how i'm doing it and the idea is to kind of stagger them as evenly as you can okay so like the first light i'll show you here in a second i might need to even get my phone out oops so I can show you how everything looks once it's all in there. Okay, give me one second here. So just one piece of tape for every light. And again, we're working with a nice flat surface here. So it makes the process very easy. Oh, and by the way, before you start doing this, test your light and make sure that it turns on and that you don't have any burnt out bulbs or anything like that. Okay, so actually, you know what, when I turn this on, you should be able to see it. There you go. Okay, so you see how, um, got, this is the first light, and then I just kind of wrapped it in like an S shape. Okay, and the idea is to kind of try to get it so that it lines up with each of the numbers on the clock. Okay, just to space it out, once you, when you look at it through this side, it's gonna be diffused really nicely, but it'll be nice if the diffusion happens kind of behind each of the, uh, the numbers. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over now to the next side, and I'm just gonna take this, and you can see how I'm kind of wrapping it into an S shape, and then I'll put it down on my surface and get that taped down. This is all gonna be hidden away later on, so it doesn't need to be like perfect inside. So don't worry about that. And just do your best to stagger these nice and evenly. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, all this light is gonna be diffused by the vellum. So don't worry if you don't have it perfect. And I'm actually folding them up a little bit 
so that they're not completely flat against the paper. And then that way, um, they're kind of, you know, just kind of hanging there because you've got the wire and that'll kind of bring the light back a little bit so that the diffusion is uh, even softer. Okay, and then you can, of course, because it's a malleable wire, you can see how I've got that going there. And then you can see what that's going to look like on the front. And then later on, if you want to, you can kind of nudge the, the little lights forward if you want, you know, if you want it to be a little bit more pronounced. Okay, so, and I'm just going to continue working my way around here and just kind of folding the wire, creating that little, that little S shape or whatever you want to call it and just taping it down. But again, just try to make sure that you get at least three in each little section. And as I, as I finish this up here, I'll show you because it's kind of hard to do this and use my surface. Okay, so you can see that one I just put down, just taping two side, the, the two wires. There's the light there. There's a wire here and a wire here, and I'm putting tape across both of these sets of wires here. Okay, so that's really all we're doing here. Nothing crazy. You could probably even just get away with just putting the lights in there, but this way everything will be nicely spaced out and you'll get a nice even illumination, which is what we're after. Okay, there we go. And don't worry about being super precise with the tape. Okay, so there you go. Let's see how that's starting to look. And then we'll end up putting the clock mechanism in there last once everything is said and done because that we don't need to worry about uh, that will all fit in there. We've got a nice sized hole for the back for you to put the little clock mechanism in. Uh, and you know, if something happens to it or if it breaks, <clears throat> you can always go in and take it out and replace it as well. And hopefully these lights stand up to the test of time. Uh, this little battery, <coughs> excuse me, this little battery pack, obviously you can open this up and swap out the battery. Chances are, once you have this in there, it's very unlikely that something's going to happen to the lights. Um, they're very low voltage LEDs. I can't imagine them burning out unless you just leave this on for years at a time, which I don't think we're going to do. We'll probably just have these out during Halloween. Okay, so you can see how that's starting to look and you can see how that's starting to look really cool as far as the illumination goes on the front. Now you could totally make this, um, you know, without these lights and I believe that those little LED lights that we use with the little remote, I think that might even fit in here. I don't know if we did that, if we made it big enough for that but I think that could be an option as well. Or uh, I'm sure that Amazon is filled with all sorts of different lights. And of course, there's no right or wrong way to illuminate the interior of this thing. So, you know, if you find something else that you think is cool, by all means, go for it. Okay, so I'm on the last leg here. I'm on the last section. I'm just kind of gluing that or taping it down, I should say. And we are going to be left with two extra lights. And I don't think we really need to worry about it. They can just be kind of dangling back there. They're not going to uh, impact anything really. Okay, so there we go. You can see how I've got them pretty pretty well staggered. Okay. And you can't really, well, let's see, actually, if I turn it off, you can see how nicely that illuminates. Okay. And ultimately, let me see, where is our bottom? There's our bottom. Okay. We can just stick that right in there for now. I'll just leave that be. Okay. And can fold this in. 
because now we can go ahead and close up our back like that. All right, and to do that, we've got a series of pieces here. Whoops. <clears throat> My glue gun is going crazy here. Okay. So this part here, this is the piece that's going to go on first. Now, uh, again, it's, it's going to be important that the section here that has a little hole, this is uh, optional. It's if you want to hang it, but you're going to want to make sure that that is aligned with where the 12 is. Okay. So the 12, you can see the 12 there. That's where you want the hole to be in align alignment with the 12. Okay, so let's get this piece on just to get this closed up. Just remember where your 12 is and you can go ahead and we'll begin by putting glue on just this tab here. Okay. And we'll spread that glue out to the very edges so that we get a nice clean seam there. Nice strong hold. I'm going to clean that bottle off. Okay. Double checking, make sure that's my 12 with the hole right up there and get that nice and lined up with that section. Make sure it's nice and flush. There we go. Now we can actually flip it like this and then just press down from the inside to get that really get that to hold nicely. Make sure that it's nice and aligned and it looks good to me. So you can see we've got that tab glued down. I think I've got that pretty centered. Take a look and see, make sure that it looks like it's going to line up with everything else and it does. So now you can go ahead and close this up. Let me clean this nozzle off. Okay. Make sure my glue is flowing nicely and let's get our glue on the remaining tabs here. We do have to do all these in one shot to close this up. And I am going to spread that glue out to the edge. I want this to look really, really nice. Okay. I went a little bit heavy on the glue there, but that's okay. Especially since we've got all these sides to worry about. We don't want this glue drying prematurely, so I will kind of throw a little extra glue on there just to make sure that it doesn't dry out before I get, get this back part down. <clears throat> okay, so watch the side opposite of the side that's hinged. And I can already tell this is drying out. So I'm gonna reapply some extra glue there, put that down and focus on getting this side as you know, accurately aligned as accurately as you can, and then start working your way around the rest of the perimeter. If you need to kind of nudge the wall in or out to get that nice and aligned, you can stick your hand in there and do so. And then if something doesn't completely stick, don't worry about it. We'll go back in and fix it with a little, a little trick but try to make sure that that is aligned as accurately as you can get it <clears throat> and just hold that down for a moment while it sets. I can already tell that I've got a few sections here that are not making very good contact and that's quite all right because I'm going to grab my scrap piece of paper. I've got this orange one here, throw a little bit of glue right on the very edge, find the little seams here. Like you can see, see how that's sticking up. Just take your glue, slide it in between those two layers and paint a little bit of glue on that section there that that's not sticking and press and hold that down in that specific area until it does set. And you can actually stick your hand up there to push up to help it get even more contact. And then, you know, just look around, go full 360. Make sure that everything is sitting nice and flush. I got this little area here that didn't. So again, I'm just painting a little bit of glue on that section, pressing down, making sure that everything is nice and flush. 
and I've got I've got a couple little areas here that I'm going to give some TLC to as well because I just want this to be nice. And this one is kind of down, but not all the way. So I'm just going to paint a little bit of glue in between those two areas. And then this part here, this was my worst side here. And it's okay. I can go back and pretty much fix anything. Okay, and last one here. I've got one more little section that just needs a little extra loving. Just pop it right in there. And press that down. Okay, beautiful. All right, so there it is. It's getting there. The sides are nice. Let me move this out of the way. And now, all right, so this is the back with the little door. We've got a nice little panel. Obviously, you want to match up the panel with the existing hole should you want to hang it. And let's get our glue on this panel. I'll put that down on the black piece. And then this is going to go onto the back that we just put on. But it's going to be a lot easier because... We already have it all connected nicely. Make sure you get that glue out to the very edges. You don't want that peeling back at all. Okay, and I'm just gonna just gonna make sure that I line it up with the hole and that it's we have a nice border going all the way around as well. I think that's good. Let me lift that up and just give it a little bit of a nudge. Here or there, wherever you need it to go, and press that down into place. There we go. Now for the little door, we'll get that in place as well. There we go. And this you're gonna want to, you're gonna want to center that like so. So you have a nice even border all the way around. And I think that's good. Might be off a tad, but that's all right. There we go. Okay. So that's going to go right on here like so. Okay. Beautiful. Looks good. And I think what we can do with this is Rather than put the glue on this piece, you just put it right on the surface here. And then that way we can work that glue out to the very edges of the surface. And just going a little crazy on the inside. And then I'm going to do a nice line around the perimeter that I'm going to spread out. Using my finger, just like that. And just get that glue out to the edges. And spreading it out like this forces it to kind of start mixing with the air and drying quickly. And don't forget to make sure that you line this up with the little hole there as well. Just like that. And work your fingers around the perimeter. Make sure that everything is nice and lined up on the edges. There we go. Nicely done. There we go. That should do it for that. There we go. Okay. And I do have a little bit of glue that kind of spread out here, so and that's okay. So technically, you know what? Probably should have put the glue on this actual piece of that. But you know what, once you close it up, you don't really see it. Okay, and so you can see here, oh, that's starting to look. Okay, I'm gonna throw that back in there now. Now we can go ahead and put our face on here. So again, we have, we have this layer that's gonna go on top of this layer. Where's my 12? There it is. 
And that's going to cover that up nicely. So technically, get this glued down now. And I think I'm going to, yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be a little challenging because there's a lot of surface area here, but we're going to do our best and I'm going to go, I'm going to go out to the perimeter here, do a nice thick line of glue and we're going to spread that out nice and thin. Okay, now this piece that we're putting on is identical to the, uh, the inner piece here. So you can feel free to just put your glue on like this and then maybe hit the bat here a couple times. You're not gonna get glue on every single inch of this. So I wouldn't even try because things are already starting to dry. And then I would work that glue out to the edge. And if we need to, we can always go in using that technique and kind of paint some extra glue in little spots where maybe it's not sitting completely. Okay, and that'll be fine. Okay, so find your 12. Where's my 12, where's my 12, there's my 12, and there's my 12. Okay, so I've got that second layer on there now. Uh, if you notice that maybe the contact between the top layer and that bottom layer of the actual clock face here, isn't sitting as flush as you'd like. You know, you can always, let me pop that back in there. You can always use the little painting trick here. You can just throw a little bit of glue right on the very tip of a, a really thin piece of scrap paper. And I kind of just did one off camera. I don't have any more really, well, maybe this one a little bit, but you can, you can stick it right between right between the two layers of the bats there and just paint a little bit underneath. You don't need a lot, okay? And I got maybe a little bit too much on there, but you can just press that down and help those two little sections kind of connect, okay? But that's that. And now, let me move this over. We gotta put together our little moon face here. Okay, so we've got this piece here. We did this in a gold foil, and then we've got the little pattern paper, pattern piece with the little stars cut out. Um, this doesn't, doesn't really matter where this goes. So we just wanna go ahead and get some glue on this. Now, it's kinda hard to see where the holes are for the stars because of this pattern. So be kinda careful not to get glue through this piece look, well, yours probably doesn't have this kind of crazy wacky pattern on it. If it does, just be careful, but get that glue out to the very edges. Okay. It's kind of almost uh, reminiscent of the Dreaming Tree logo, kinda. All right, so we're gonna match up the little holes where the little shaft is gonna come out for the clock mechanism. Just make sure you get that nice and lined up and press that down. You can see how nice that looks with the gold foil. You could also do it in a silver if you want, whatever works. Okay, and then we're gonna glue our moon. Now you'll notice that there's a series of little score marks on here. There's uh, three of them that are kind of bunched together. That's where our witch is gonna go. The, the three there are for her broom and then there's one right about here that is gonna line up with the top of her, no? There we go. It's gonna line up with right where her cape meets her back. Okay, so it's gonna go like that. So her shoe is almost touching the little hole for the mechanism, okay? Now it's a very delicate piece, so don't go too crazy with the glue here, otherwise, you're gonna get glue shooting out everywhere. Just get enough on, on her and try to maybe get a little bit out to her extremities, especially the broom like that. And then just hit it with your finger a little bit so that it flattens the glue out a bit and it doesn't spread all over the place. Now we gotta kinda act quick here. While it sets, find the little cut out for the broom and then match that up with her back part, just like that. 
Okay, there we go. Just kind of flying through the stars. And then Mr. Moon Man here. Now there's also some little cutouts for, or some little markers to help you locate. There's one right here that's gonna go right up against his lower lip. And then there's another marker that goes underneath his, underneath his nose. Okay, so it should kind of, kind of hug the witch like that. All right, so let's get our glue on Mr. Moon Man here. And I can go a little heavier in the thicker parts and then ease up on the thinner parts. And then we're gonna dab this a little bit too so that we don't get glue going all over the place. I think that's good. So again, make sure you line that up as accurately as you can. The outer part of it should kind of match up with the, the round part of the base that it's sitting on already. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so now I just need to glue this onto uh, the actual structure here and you want to kind of make sure that, well, that it's, you know, straight. You don't want it like this. You don't want it like that. You want, uh, you want the nose, the tip of the nose to be slightly below the three. Okay, so do your best to get that lined up and the broom should be just slightly below this, uh, the nine here. Okay, so anyway, let's just get that on there. Get your glue on the face, or on this piece, I should say. Okay, and just watch the orientation here, kind of holding it on the sides. And I think that is, well, let's see. You can always turn it like a little turntable if you need to. I think the idea, actually a good thing to focus on is the tips, the points of the moon. Just make sure that there's kind of even space between each of the points and the nine on the clock there. Okay, and that is, that is it for that. Okay, so, Let's take a look here what this looks like. I like to kind of check it out as we make progress. Oh yeah, there we go. That's looking awesome. Okay, so moving on. Uh, what we can do while we work on the top is get this thing glued down to the base. Okay, and again, when you glue this down to the base, you want to make sure that you have it flush up against the back. You don't want to create a space here. You don't need a border here. You want it flush up against the back in case you decide that you want to hang this, um, you know, on a wall. So what we're going to do is we're going to put glue on the entire bottom. And we're going to go a little bit thick on this. We really want it to stick. And then I'm going to get some glue out to the edges. I want that to look nice and flush. I'm gonna paint that glue out to the edges with my finger. There we go. And we're gonna pop this down, remember, up against the back, nice and flush. You can technically just you put it on your surface like this and then bring this in to get it nice and centered and give that a press. Looks center to me, and of course I know it's flush because it's laying down on my surface. And then you can flip it up and let gravity do its thing here for just a moment. That will hold for us nicely. Okay, so there's our nice little base. I'm going to put this off to the side while we finish up the top. Okay, so you guys remember this thing. Now we do have a little... Uh, Well, just a little piece that we're gonna kind of put around it to give it a little bit of bling. So you wanna fold it at the score marks. Okay, so it's gonna be like that. 
And I'm gonna start, this thing's gonna be uh, nice and centered on this piece. So it's going right in the middle. So you have an even amount of space on both, you know, above it and below it, kind of like that. And we're gonna start in one of the middle sections here. I don't wanna start on the very end. So I'm just gonna put little dots of glue on each of these little round areas here. And my glue bottle is starting to not cooperate now. And I'm just gonna hit that with my finger, kind of flatten it out a little bit as far as the glue goes. Okay, so there's my, there's my wet section there. Get that nice and centered on this piece. And just hold that for a moment while it sets. Okay, I can hold it with this hand while I fold that out of the way and throw some glue on these sets of little dots. And then fold that over. Just make sure it's nice and centered. There we go. We can fold that over and get our next set of That's on there. And fold that over. Keep it nice and centered. And last but not least, get this section here. And close that up. Okay, so this piece here, now that we've got it all done, we're gonna throw some glue on it, and that's gonna go right up on top. We're gonna to build a little platform for kind of like a little finial and a little handle. Okay, so I'm gonna get that glue out to the edges so it sits nice and flush up on top. And it's a symmetric piece, so you don't need to worry about you know the orientation. But you definitely wanna make sure that you get it nice and centered. Okay, and I'm kind of using my overhead camera and my monitor here to make sure that I have it centered and that looks good. Okay, just press that down for just a moment. Let it set. Okay, and there we go. So that's coming together. And that just leaves the top part. Okay. Oh, real quick, by the way, we did also include this little donut and you can go ahead and glue that donut right around the little hole here. Should you decide to hang this, uh, this will kind of reinforce this little area so that it doesn't get torn up as easily. Okay, so don't forget about that. And last but not least here, we've got this piece, okay, that we need to construct. And this little piece is going to hold a little wire metal handle Okay, and this is the actual metal that we sourced at the craft store. You probably find it at the jewelry section. We'll include the gauge or the thickness of the wire that we used. You're welcome to use anything you'd like. You could probably even use, um, could probably even use like a, a pipe cleaner. Okay, so now we don't want to close this thing up all the way because we're going to need to put this handle through here, and um, and then close it up, okay? So, but we do want to construct it like partially. So we're gonna go ahead and begin by putting glue on one of the tabs here. Doesn't matter which one, I'm just starting here. And you're gonna fold this over and just connect it with its neighbor and press and hold for a moment while it sets. Okay, well, that went quick. And then we'll move on over to the next tab. There we go. And fold that over, press and hold. Now if you get a little bit of glue that squirts out here, it's okay because we do have a nice little gold piece that we're gonna glue around that as well, just to kind of give it a little more bling. Okay, next little tab here. And bring that in, align it, and squeeze. Now remember, don't close this up yet, because we're gonna we're gonna hot glue. And there's one more tab in here. Get your glue on that tab and close it up. We're gonna hot glue that wire in there 
so that it's more permanent and doesn't move around. You probably don't have to do that, but we're going to do it anyway. Okay, so remember, we're going to leave the bottom open. I'm going to leave the bottom open, just like that. Okay, now let's grab this piece here and get this nice and folded at the score marks. Okay, and then we're going to glue this to the to the walls of the piece that we just constructed. Kind of make it look pretty. Just like that. Now obviously you'll see that uh, two sides of this contain the little hole that will match up with this hole here. Okay, but I'm going to start on I'm going to start on the side without the hole on the inner part of this piece just like we did with the uh, other little gold embellishment. Okay, so just throw a little bit of glue on this piece here. I don't think you really need to worry about getting it on every single little inch of it. A little bit of that glue is going to go a long way. And just line that up. And you can kind of you can close this up, but just don't glue it closed. Basically, is what I meant to say. And just get it nice and flush with with the top. Okay, and you can stick your finger in there and help push that down. Should be nice and flush up here. Okay, and then when you fold the other sides over, it should match up with the little hole that's already in there. It's kind of hard to see because there's no light shining through it, but you'll see what I mean. Okay, so there's the piece with the hole. Make sure that you get some glue out to the edge of this one. You want that to sit nice and flush. And just fold that over. Make sure it lines up with that hole on the structural piece, the black piece. Okay, just hold that down for a moment while it sets. And then we can move on over to the other side. The other side here now is the side with the hole in it. So again, once we uh, when we put the uh, little metal part on here, if you don't have this type of wire handy, you can always use, like I said, a pipe cleaner or any sort of wire that you have it will definitely work. Okay, so just get that glued on. And the reason we have to do this now is because you got to stick the wire through there. Okay, just make sure that's nice and level, nice and even with the top. And that just leaves our last little section here. Make sure you get some glue out to the edge of this one. And you probably only need to do the perimeter. As long as that holds, it ain't going to go anywhere. Okay, so just match that up. Make sure it's flush with the top. Give that a squeeze. Just give me a second to set. Okay, so there we go. Just like that. And now kind of flare these open a little bit. All right, so here's where uh, we need to kind of decide, you know, how big your handle is going to be. Now, also, one other thing, too, I need to show you this, is I took a styrofoam ball and I cut, cut the bottom of it uh, probably about an eighth of an inch off so it's flat. You can see how that looks. Um, that is actually going to go on top of this, and then the wire is going to go around it. Okay, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna glue this on right now because it's just gonna get in the way. Um, we can always put that on later, uh, but for now, I want to focus on the wire. Okay, so you're gonna need some wire cutters, obviously, and well, I think a full loop. Got a full loop right about there, so I'm gonna cut this. Okay, so we've got our little metal ring here. Now, um, the way I cut it, obviously I cut it a little bit too big. Uh, what we want to do is cut it so that roughly it's about two and a half inches wide when it, it forms a circle. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off a little bit of this. And hopefully it's not too much. And I'm just going to bring it in. Just try to keep it as circular as you can until it's about two and a half inches. That's still a little bit too much. So I'm going to just bend this in, try to keep it as round as you can. Uh, if you need to, you can find something that has a two and a half inch 
diameter and just kind of wrap it wrap it around until you have it at about two and a half inches I'm just using my little table here with my built-in ruler okay so I can I am just gonna trim off just a little bit more of this okay Try to make that as round as I can. You should be able to just kind of bend it until it looks good and round. And remember this bottom part, you're really not going to see this because it's going to be inside of our little black housing, but I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to spread this out and pop it through those little holes. And then Kind of bend it a little bit, make sure that it looks good and round. And then just measure it. That's about right. Okay, so that looks good. And what you can do if you want, you could you could glue this in if you want with some hot glue so it doesn't move. Um, but actually, because it's so long in there, I don't know that I don't know that you're really going to need to. But that's up to you if you want to make it a little more permanent. I might just throw a little spray of some hot glue in there. Okay, but you get the idea. Try to make it as round as you can. And it might just take a little bit of finagling. There we go. Okay, and now we can go ahead and close this piece up. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with a little bit of glue in there. And you're probably gonna have to layer it nice and, nice and good. So it just kind of forms a big old blob of glue. And as long as part of that is touching the, the actual metal, it should hold for you nice and in place like that. That looks good. Okay, so while it's doing that, while that's setting, you can fold these over. We're gonna have to get our glue on this, on these tabs here. My glue's making all kinds of weird noise over there. And try to work that glue out all over the tab there. And just go ahead and close that up. And just hold that in place for a moment while it sets. Let that close. Ooh, that's really hot up there. Just put that on your surface. And now, um, as I mentioned, you can see what that looks like. Uh, we do have that little styrofoam ball that we're going to put right on top here just to kind of finish it off nicely. And then this is going to get glued right onto the top here. You can see that in the other camera angle there. We're going to glue that right to the top and throw our little styrofoam ball on there as well. And, um, and really all that's left to do now is just put our little clock piece in there just to finish it off. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some glue on the bottom of this piece. And we're gonna get this glued right to the top. And you wanna make sure that you get that nice and centered right on top of this piece here. Okay, so using my camera again, I'll just pop that right on there and take a look. Make sure you got it centered and then just give that, give that a few moments to dry. Okay, there we go. All right, so moving on to the clock mechanism now. That's gonna be very simple to do. Okay, so now everyone's clock maybe well the clock mechanism may be a little bit different, but um, for the most part they they are pretty much the same. Um, I've got the battery in my mechanism. There's a little like rubbery foam piece that comes with it that you can put on there that kind of helps it uh, not move around so much. Okay, so we can put that on over the main shaft there. 
Okay, and we can take our shaft, or the actual mechanism, and poke it through, just like that. Okay, now, if your shaft is not coming out enough, or if it's coming out too much, now remember, uh, we have this little template that you can cut out multiple times, and just kind of layer it together, make it as thick as you need it, um, just to get that shaft to kind of come out just enough, just so that it's not too far out. It's up to you how far out you want your hands to be, but um, so you would layer this inside behind the actual mechanism. So for example, let me pull this out real quick. You would just take this or multiples of these and place it right over the hole, okay? And you would glue that down. Or again, you can use this as a template to cut uh, this pattern out of like a thin piece of foam core and glue that down so that when you put your, your actual mechanism in there, the shaft comes out just enough, okay? Now, you'll notice on the shaft here that there is, um, well, there's a, a little metal piece, and most of the clocks have this little metal screw that goes around it, and that holds it in place. So you wanna, you wanna screw that on, and that's what kind of keeps it sandwiched. Okay, so this is really, this is all you need to hold it in place, really. Okay, so now that is on. Keep that nice and straight. Okay, and then you can pick out your arms. Your hour hand is always going to go on first. You know, it helps to keep your hand on the actual mechanism while you put this in place. second hand is going to go on top, I'm sorry, this is the minute hand, it's going to go right on top of that. Okay, let's see if this is, if it's ticking. Well, then we got to put our second hand on. And the second hand kind of covers up everything else. Let's see if that's moving. And it is. And my minute, hand, my minute hand is moving. Now, again, um, if you find that, for example, my second hand is kind of long, um, these are very thin pieces of metal. You could literally cut those with some scissors, okay? Um, and that's going to stop right there because it is too long, you can see, okay? But there you go. That's pretty much all you need to do. And it looks like I am going to have to, uh, I've got too much of my, um, my shaft sticking through. So I'm gonna pad this up a little bit with some extra pieces of this so that it doesn't stick through as much. And that will pretty much finish up this project. I gotta get this, this second hand off. I'm just gonna kinda of wiggle it off. There we go. And again, I'll just kinda of keep playing with this until my my shaft is just at the right height. There we go. So I'm gonna come back here in just a moment and show you, show you how this should look. So just to kind of illustrate that, you know, you can um, improvise in situations like this. Um, this is, I'll show you here in a second, let me just find a pencil. This is the actual box that my mechanism came in. And I am literally just going to trace around this. this is like corrugated um, cardboard. And this will work just fine. And then I'll draw my little circle in here. Okay, and then let me just grab some scissors. You can have your machine cut it if you want. Again, no one's really gonna see this, so it doesn't need to be perfect. and you don't even need to cut it out perfectly. Uh, but I'm going to. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. It just has to you know, help kind of um, 
create a little cushion between the mechanism and the actual face or the, the back part of the actual clock. I'm just cutting little pizza slices here so that I can just poke this out. And if you want to have your machine cut this, if it can cut chipboard or cardboard or whatever, then by all means, feel free. And I'm just going to take my scissor and cut around it. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. So as long as, as long as that little shaft can penetrate through, that's all we really need to worry about. Okay, so there you have it. And now take this off, pop that on there like that, and put this on here now. And when we stick it through, we'll see how much of that shaft is exposed. And you really don't even need to glue it because it's gonna just kind of be sandwiched. Yeah, see, so the shaft comes out way less now. So I can technically grab my little screw, this guy here. Oops. And just screw that in place. And it literally is like super flush with it now. And the more you tighten it, and I kind of tore up her, her heel. It's okay though. There we go. Okay, so now that screw, along with the little threaded part of the shaft, are completely flush, and that threaded part is barely visible, which is pretty much what we want. Okay, so I'm gonna put the, put the hour hand on, you know, again. It helps to kind of hold it so you don't crush the paper. And just slide that right on. And then we'll get our minute hand on. And just pop that right on. And then our second hand, where did you go, mister? There you are. And that should cover it right up. And you can see how that's working now. And that looks more like it. Okay, now if you need to, you might need to kind of uh, bend the arms a little bit and let's just double check and make sure that my minute hand is moving okay so now again if your if your minute hand is too long you can always just take a scissor and I'm gonna see I want it to I want it to terminate about there and let's see where that goes I think I'm gonna trim that a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so there is our functional clock. Everything is working, everything is in place. And now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the light. There we go. Slide that all back in, and there is your beautiful Moon Man clock ready for your Halloween display. Oh, and don't forget to put your little styrofoam ball up there. Uh, as you probably noticed, I put some rhinestones on there. I'm gonna throw one rhinestone here in the center. I'm gonna keep the, uh, the red second hand. I think that looks really good. Kinda uh, makes everything else pop, but there you have it. And again, you can always hang it on the wall too. So it's up to you how and where. Oh, you know what? I forgot one other thing. Uh, Velcro dot. We've got some Velcro dots here to help keep the little door closed. Okay, so let me show you how we do that. It's sticky on both sides, so I'm gonna take, um, I'm gonna take the sticky off of one side and put it right here on this, little, on this little scallop part and peel that off and then go ahead and close it. Press that down. And now, there we go. So that's gonna sit nice and flush for us. And there's our beautiful clock. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, this one is definitely, um, just because we, you know, we added the lights and, and the mechanism, 
uh, a little more involved, but definitely can't wait to see your version of it with your patterned papers and your color schemes. They're gonna look great. And I'm sure that your guests, if you're having a Halloween party or your friends or family will be very impressed uh, with the outcome. So, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button and help my counter grow and grow and grow. Uh, and if you make this or any of the items from our new bundle, we'd love to see them. So join us in the official group on Facebook by doing a search for Dreaming Tree Group, where you can join myself and the 15,000 plus other dreamers that inspire us daily. So thank you for hanging out with me, and I look forward to crafting with you again. Stay on top of all things Dreaming Tree and engage with us today. Get the latest news and enter in our giveaways on Facebook. Get inspired by following us on Pinterest. Be the first to see our new product launches on Instagram. Do you prefer Twitter? Yep, we're there too. Watch our beautiful product trailers and assembly tutorials on YouTube. For more information, visit www.3dsvg.com. Live, craft, love, and dream.